After meeting a twin flame, your life will never be the same. Whether you meet them virtually via text, social media, or somewhere else online, or whether you meet them in person. And when I use the word meet, I am applying that word very broadly because a twin flame meeting and the effects, the signs I'm going to share with you that come from such a meeting can be so many different things depending on your unique set of circumstances with your twin. Again, this could be virtually online. This could be seeing them, glimpsing them in person. This could be having a small and on the surface, seemingly meaningless conversation with them when they are nothing but a stranger from a physical perspective. This even could be having a very powerful and intense fifth dimension or even like a dream experience in which you encounter your twin flame. But regardless of how you meet them, after this point of meeting, there will be this kind of chasm. This meeting is sort of like an energetic earthquake that creates a chasm in this earthquake metaphor, this divide between everything that you were and your life was prior and everything your life becomes afterwards. And this experience itself, the meeting itself, will feel groundbreaking, earth shattering to you regardless of how small or insignificant it may seem to others on the surface. This is your soul confirming to you that a major event has just taken place in your life. And by major event, I mean something that your soul has predestined, has decided prior to this lifetime. Your soul and your twin flame soul determined with one another prior to this incarnation that you would meet in this time, in this place, in this way. And again, all of this is highly unique and individualized to you. So only take from this podcast video and from all of my videos, whatever resonates with you personally, because truly it is your own heart and soul that is like a compass for both the twin flame path and your life more generally. And my only goal through all of my twin flame readings and these podcasts is simply to reconnect you with what you already know to be true and to lead you into deeper levels of self-trust so you can trust yourself and that knowing that you have within you. So if all of that resonates with you, please do consider subscribing to my channel, joining our community of like-minded, conscious, creative twin flame beings here on YouTube. So what happens after you meet a twin flame? I'm going to be sharing with you 10 signs that you met your twin flame, but these signs are a bit unusual from what we generally talk about as twin flame creators here on YouTube, because very often we talk about the kinds of surface level signs signs relating to how this person will make you feel in the moment of meeting them, specific things and experiences that may happen to you on kind of that outer level, that surface level during the time of this meeting. And while all of that information is incredibly valuable, I realized today that very often when it comes to twin flame signs, symptoms, and synchronicities, a major problem is that our doubt, our ego mind, and the doubt our ego creates tends to cause a kind of energetic interference with what our intuition, what our soul knows, to be true about the identity of our twin flame. So very often what happens is we meet a twin flame, we experience all of these signs, symptoms, and synchronicities, and then we begin to research what is happening to us, which leads me into the first sign. And again, not all of you will experience every single sign. These are just general trends that I've seen within my own twin flame path, as well as through connecting with others. So if you don't connect with all 10 of the signs, 
This of course does not mean that you aren't a twin flame. It simply means that some of these signs may be highly individualized to you specifically and some might be to or meant for others. So again, the first sign is after meeting a twin flame, you will very likely begin researching the topic of twin flames or you will research the signs and symptoms you are experiencing until you are led or I would say divinely guided into deeper information that leads you to learning about twin flames. So for me personally, I actually found the topic of twin flames immediately prior to reconnecting with my twin in the physical world about five years ago. So what happened is about a month or two before meeting him, I had this very, very strong soul sense that something major was about to take place in my life, which this could be a whole separate video. I'm sure many of you experience this as well. I just had this knowing that I was about to meet him. It's hard to put words to, but it's like I cut off some other romantic people in my life at the time because I had this sudden sense that I was about to meet someone who would be very important to me. It's almost like I could energetically feel him with me. And I know many of you will experience this type of thing as well. Usually I find that twin flames tend to actually discover the label twin flame, those actual words, that term, either immediately prior to meeting their twin flame in the physical or immediately after, at some point during that general time frame of their meeting. Now, of course, there can be a lot of variation on these signs, but I do find that in general, the kinds of profound and seemingly completely illogical and unexplainable experiences that we have as twin flames is actually the catalyst that drives us to begin researching what is happening to me? What is going on in my physical body when I'm around this person? Why am I having these intense dream experiences, these telepathic experiences? Very often, or I should say always, we are divinely guided into the knowledge of certain topics and things exactly and precisely when this thing is or is soon going to apply to our life path here on earth is going to be essential for us in some way. And along with this, you immediately find that the topic of twin flames resonates with you. Many people question whether they are a twin flame, but the thing is, twin flame material to people who are not on this path seems either completely illogical and therefore they immediately dismiss it or they don't even register it at all. Again, we need to trust that we are divinely guided into the meeting of certain people and also the meeting of certain pieces of information. We are met with information the same way we would meet an important person in our life in perfect divine timing. So if the idea of twin flames, the concept of twin flames is resonating with you, strongly there is most likely a reason for that because again those who have not experienced the twin flame path or who are not going to experience it who aren't twin flames tend to entirely dismiss the concept altogether so the second sign that you've met a twin flame or what tends to happen is that you begin to come into a deeper level of spiritual awakening. So for some twin flames, the meeting with their twin is actually what instantaneously ignites them on this journey of spiritual awakening. For others, they may have already started this journey and then their twin comes in as a sort of catalyst. But regardless, in all cases, when you meet a twin flame, you will find yourself becoming more spiritually activated. So the ways in which this manifests will be different depending on your situation and circumstances, but I would say at least eight or nine times out of 10, if not more, twin flames tend to begin to develop newfound or intensified spiritual gifts or abilities after meeting their twin flame. 
And very often, if you are someone who has been a bit entrenched in the matrix prior to meeting your twin flame, let's say well assimilated into normalized conventional society, you will find yourself dismissing your own spiritual gifts and abilities, wondering, am I going crazy for being able to sense people's energy, to read energy, to do whatever it is. There's so many things these spiritual gifts and abilities could be because these are so unique to each and every one of us. We are all given different kinds of spiritual strengths. Some of you may find yourselves being height like having heightened psychic abilities with those around you not just with your twin with whom of course you have a very natural telepathic bond but even with others you may find yourself very capable of reading people's thoughts people's energy some are able to begin seeing auras visually seeing entities um, there's so many different things that your spiritual gifts could be. Usually they fall under one of the categories of what we call the different clairs, things like clairsentiency, clairvoyancy, clairaudiency. So being able to pick up on more of the the spiritual realm, either through your visual sight, through your hearing, through your senses, through your own energy, whatever the case may be. And again, these could manifest very subtly for you. So don't be so quick to dismiss this and say, oh, well, I don't have any kind of sudden intense spiritual ability because more than likely that is your ego actually dismissing some of your innate spiritual gifts and strengths that you've been given so the third sign that you've met a twin flame is that your life begins to feel as though it is falling apart very often after meeting a twin flame there is this kind of ecstasy within the initial stages of the meeting again the actual timeline can really vary depending on the person but we usually refer to these feelings of ecstasy intense spiritual mental emotional connection as the love bubble phase so sometimes this happens immediately after meeting your twin sometimes it can happen years later again it just depends on your situation but usually following this kind of high this ecstasy of meeting this person you have this come down or i guess one way to think of it is a come down although the, although that's not really completely energetically accurate because what's really happening is you upon meeting your twin flame are going through this intense energy merge with them essentially your energy fields are merging in a very powerful way that then activates you to this super heightened level of spiritual awakening of heightened energetic sensitivity which brings with it all of those intensified spiritual gifts and abilities but then what happens is you have to then integrate this energy into the denser levels of your being into your whole energy field your chakra system and as this energy moves through you it comes up against all of these blocks these blocks that we could think of as negative energetic patterns usually these negative energetic patterns are subconsciously stored because as we often say the subconscious is a reflection of the energy field so your twin flames energy this twin flame bond this intense energy moving through you comes up against all of these limiting beliefs some of these could be beliefs that stem from your own experiences in this lifetime some may come from previous lifetimes but many of these beliefs are actually simply downloaded from the collective from collective wounding from negative programming that most of society buys into that is then programmed into you unconsciously which is why i am so so passionate about using subliminals to deeply reprogram the subconscious mind for those of you who don't know subliminals are meditation tracks that contain unconscious affirmations that are actually targeted to the unconscious mind 
So unlike traditional spoken affirmations, when you listen to a subliminal, you aren't supposed to be able to consciously hear or make out clearly the words themselves because your subconscious mind actually has a wider range of hearing. So it's able to pick up on these embedded affirmations and because the conscious mind can't hear the affirmations, it can't reject them. So these affirmations are able to pass much more freely into the subconscious conscious where they can then deeply reprogram your negative thoughts and limiting beliefs which then of course the subconscious reflecting the energy field can have a huge energetic impact on your aura on your energy field so we can really use subliminals to reprogram our mind magnetize our energy for whatever we desire to create manifest or attract in our lives for twin flames specifically, I've created a twin flame seven chakra clearing subliminal. Now this is extremely powerful as an energy clearing sound therapy tool because it addresses unconditional love blocks that twin flames tend to store unconsciously in all seven chakra centers. So this subliminal comes from my website soundandsoulful.com. As you can see on the screen, I've created over 100 subliminals for all areas of life. You can listen to these subliminals in different background sounds. You can also combine them to create your own custom playlist that you can then save to your account. So all of these subliminals are on my website for members. You can create a free trial account on my site and try any subliminal I've created completely free for seven days so the link to this twin flame seven chakra clearing as well as more information about all of my subliminals is linked in the pinned comment and description box so the dark night of the soul very often after meeting your twin you will feel as though your life is falling apart but as i like to say really this is a sign of everything falling together because this energy as it moves through you as it comes up against these blocks within your subconscious within your energy you will be met with resistance within yourself which really leads me into the next point which is that you may actually feel intense negative emotional symptoms or even physical symptoms through this process because what this powerful energy is doing is fully aligning you to your highest timeline to your highest soul growth soul evolution and alignment with your true authentic self but the problem is because of how we are programmed through society and through our negative experiences in this lifetime, very few of us, I would say maybe none of us are fully aligned prior to meeting our twin with this highest path because we all do pick up unconsciously some of these beliefs, some of these negative ideas about ourselves or our lives, some of this collective wounding that actually prevents us from fully radiating our full authentic most aligned soul frequency so this energy moves through us for the purpose of breaking down these walls and aligning us but in the process of those energetic walls being broken down we may feel pain confusion doubt we can feel this through all layers of our body the physical the emotional the energetic the mental so at times twin flames after meeting their twin can actually go through a time where they feel extremely fatigued very tired they might feel completely lost in life which actually leads me to sign number four that you've just met your twin flame which is you actually feel completely lost or you feel as though you are being completely put on a different path when it comes to your life so you might find that certain passions interests, hobbies things that you took on as part of yourself may no longer resonate with you even things you considered to be part of your personality because very often we don't realize that certain things we consider to be us to be our personality even to be our hobbies or interests can actually be somehow projections of our own ego or things that we picked up as part of our own personality because it was actually what the people around us or society wanted us to be 
It's what society wanted us to present through our passions, hobbies, or personalities. So very often you will find that certain things about yourself completely begin to change or alter themselves, which can give you a sense of loss of identity. This is tied directly to what we call ego death. Your ego self, that constructed sense of self, what we sometimes even call the personality of ourselves, completely begins to deconstruct in order to essentially level the ground upon which you can build this new, fully aligned self and version of your life. So the fifth thing that can happen after you meet a twin flame, and this goes along with this deconstruction of the ego self through ego death, is that your beliefs will most likely be very deconstructed. So if you have held on to any kinds of rigid beliefs about others, about life, about yourself, very often you will find that everything starts to come into question after meeting your twin flame. Even your most deeply held beliefs. For me personally, I was raised in an extremely conservative and strict Christian environment. And because of that, I had very strong heart chakra blocks. My heart was very blocked to fully giving unconditional love to others and receiving it to myself and to myself because this belief was kind of acting like a wall. And after meeting my twin flame, all of these beliefs I'd held so closely to my heart that were actually walls around my heart really began to crumble. And this caused a kind of existential crisis for me that continued on for months or even years because very often, and I'm sure many of you connect with this in some way, when we pick up these beliefs in early childhood, whether it's a religious belief, a belief about ourselves, about our place in the world, about society, we tend to hold really tightly to these beliefs and we absorb them as part of who we are, a key part of our identity. In fact, sometimes the keystone part of our identity. So as these things begin to come into question, we realize just how much of ourselves, our interactions with others and our lives were actually built from this belief that we are now beginning to question. So sign number six that you have just met your twin flame and this really is something I already spoke on but your passions and interests will begin to change or you may completely develop new ones. So oftentimes after meeting your twin, usually because of this ramped up energetic sensitivity, because of these newfound or intensified spiritual gifts, you may actually find yourself drawn to certain interests or passions that you didn't even know that you had. Very often, twin flames will find themselves getting interested in things like art or yoga or meditation, having more what we would think of traditionally as spiritual kinds of interests or passions that they never thought they would develop or have. Now, sign number seven, and this really goes along with, again, what I was just saying. I took notes here, so I'm trying to follow that, but also I know I'm elaborating a lot and kind of speaking off the cuff here, but very often this this really needs its own space even though i spoke on this earlier because it's so key but because of the ways in which your twin flames energy merges with yours and there is this sudden influx of energy you are receiving that instantaneously spikes your vibration when your vibration raises in this way what naturally happens is you become more energetically sensitive. Now, this might sound like a nice, great, like spiritual kind of experience, but the thing is that in real time, when you have this newfound energetic sensitivity, it doesn't always look so neat and pretty on the surface because when you become more sensitive energetically to things, people, and places, first of all, you may find yourself not being able to tolerate those things, people, and places. And this can come with a lot of self-judgment because let's say that you used to spend a lot of time around a certain friend group that was really negative. However, these lower vibrations, before you had this raise, this sudden influx in your energy field and this newfound sensitivity, you may have been able to tolerate being around these people or even found some enjoyment or connection through being with these people. 
But then all of a sudden you meet your twin, you receive this influx of energy, your vibration begins to radically raise, your life is coming into alignment, but also falling apart at the same time. And suddenly you find yourself just completely incapable of being around these people. You may find yourself agitated, irritable. After being around them, you might feel completely energetically depleted or tired or drained. And again, this might come with self-judgment. You may ask yourself, why can't I be around these people that I used to connect with or even have fun with? The same thing goes for work. Very often, twin flames are very high achievers prior to meeting their twin flame or high achievers in the world's sense, in society's sense. They may have very high-powered careers or be working in the corporate world. They could be very academically focused on their studies. They could just be kind of type A personalities. Again, this isn't everyone, just many people coming to this path. And then after going through their twin flame meeting, this sudden spiritual awakening, this dark night of the soul, they find themselves suddenly completely burnt out. It's like they can no longer force themselves into that job, into that career. They might be someone who used to be able to work 12, 14, 16 hours a day. And then all of a the sudden they find themselves needing to sleep for 12, 14 or 16 hours a day. And of course this on the surface to others, in the 3D looks like run-of-the-mill just depression, chronic fatigue, but this can be really confusing because you might be someone who has never experienced these symptoms this kind of way before. And they seem to come completely out of the blue. And again, this comes attached with a lot of self-judgment that comes from the ego as the ego is saying, why can't you just work like you used to? Why are you feeling so burnt out? Why can't you socially connect with these people you used to connect with? And so very often we start thinking that either we're going crazy or that something is wrong with us. And this is sign number eight. You might've just met your twin flame is one of the most common things twin flames report saying after going through all of this or through this process is either am i going crazy or is something wrong with me you might just have this impending feeling like something isn't right and usually this comes from your ego that is really grappling with its own demise because again you're going through this ego death everything about your life that is not aligned with the most authentic, soulful, soulful version of you is being completely torn down, completely deconstructed, which again sounds great on the surface, but in real time, this looks incredibly messy. This looks like confusion, doubt. This looks like vacillating between feeling so high, spiritually speaking, feeling so confident in who you are becoming and in this twin flame path, vacillating between that and suddenly having what feels like a sudden breakdown, feeling really hyper emotional, feeling confused and doubtful and even just completely lost. So know that if you are having these feelings of, is something going wrong with me? Very often, this is just a self-judgment coming from your ego that is drawing upon the collective beliefs of society that we should think, act, and behave in a set series of ways that you are no longer aligning with. This is a completely normal feeling to have as a twin flame and know that you are not alone in this. Now, sign number nine that you might've just met a twin flame. And of course, this goes along with everything we've been speaking on, the ego death, no longer aligning with certain people, places, or jobs, but likely at many points along this twin flame path, you will feel intensely alone. I find that twin flames, especially after going through this meeting, very often they will meet their twin flame. There will be a kind of love bubble phase, and then there will be a kind of separation where they will go through an intensified dark night of the soul and feel very intensely alone or isolated. You may find yourself going into a kind of hermit mode, and this can happen for a variety of reasons, which really depends on your own individual and unique twin flame journey. But very often, this simply happens because you are 
no longer aligning with so many things that used to bring you joy, that you used to connect with, certain things you consider to be interests that no longer interest you, certain things you used to love doing that now make you feel tired, a job that you may have had some passion for that now makes you feel burnt out, relationships with people that you once used to have fun with that now cause you to feel a kind of resistance in your body, feel negativity, feel confusion, feel um, just low vibrational. Again, this all comes from this heightened energetic sensitivity. So again, know that this is an illusion of aloneness because very often, and I've said this before, but twin flames are strategically placed or I should say kind of separated very often from one another in different communities, different family structures, different cultures for the purpose of being kind of like this beacon of light in that place that is dark in the sense that it is unconscious to true unconditional love. You chose this path not to merge with that darkness, not to merge with conventional ideals of of love which are highly conditional but actually to be a beacon of light to be a path forger to be what we call a generational curse breaker that is what you came here to be and to do however fully consciously connecting with that knowing can be very difficult when it feels as though everything you've known and loved and understood in the physical 3d world is now coming into question and being deconstructed for the purpose of being built anew. And finally, the tenth sign that you might have just met your twin flame is you may feel a kind of soul monogamy to this person. I spoke on soul monogamy for the first time in my most recent twin flame reading video. By the way, I do channel twin flame readings and premiere them live at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So you can join me here again at those times and on those days if you are connecting with with these thoughts and ideas, but I spoke on soul monogamy as being this feeling of having a commitment in your energy, in your heart and soul and mind to your twin flame counterpart, regardless of the physical or 3D label that you've placed upon the relationship or connection. And this really usually isn't a conscious choice but very often something that you just feel unconsciously. You can't help but feel otherwise very often with a twin flame. Again, regardless of how you are labeling your physical 3D connection with them at that time. So after meeting a twin flame, well, usually even years prior to meeting your twin, you have this awareness that there's this person out there for you somewhere. This is very common for twin flames. Sometimes even prior to meeting their twin, Twin Flames will report feeling this sensation of I feel like I'm cheating on my true divine lover, the person I'm supposed to be with even when I'm going on dates with other people before meeting my twin. However, after meeting them in whatever way you meet, again, virtually, through the 5D, through a dream experience or in person, regardless of how you meet, very often you will feel a sudden loss of interest romantically or physically attraction wise when it comes to other potential romantic partners in your life and this isn't something i would say that everyone experiences it's just something that i see very commonly where twin flames will meet one another and then suddenly there is this feeling of this is my person my soul is committed to this person very often twin flames will be celibate after meeting their twin and again i'm not saying this happens to everyone it's just a common experience because they feel so strongly energetically connected to this person so attracted in every sense meaning through their energy energetically attracted physically mentally emotionally to this singular other person this this representation of their soul in this other physical body that they find themselves incapable of returning to these previous romantic connections with the same kinds of feelings of attraction 
So do let me know in the comments, which, if any of these signs of meeting a twin flame that you have experienced, or if there's anything you've experienced with your twin or after meeting them that I didn't mention here on this list. Really my favorite part of having this beautiful community here on YouTube is that we can share experiences with one another, support one another, and really just provide that kind of of energetic safe space for us here virtually to remember that or reconnect with the truth that we are never alone on this journey. So thank you for being a co-creator here on this channel of all of this information, of all of my readings. If I do resonate with you, please do subscribe to this channel. Join our community of like-minded, conscious, creative beings here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Instagram at magnetize yourself. And like I said earlier, I do post Twin Flame readings live on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I post Twin Flame informational videos or podcast videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time again, so be sure to check back at any of those times to join us here for future podcasts and readings. I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful rest of your week, and I will talk to you again in the next podcast video.